And we're going to go on the tour of the TE subcom connectivity, the submarine cable laying ship. And um, we're about to, to walk on. So here we go. Let's grab the handrail. This is like the reverse of walking on the plank. We're walking off the plank. This is White Bay. Some camera people down here. We are looking up this ship to see the six and a half thousand kilometers of cable. Your safety glasses here are kind of like a visor that drops down. Yeah. Thank you. Besides that, it's just company policies, safety, and we'll only need that when we're right here. Once we go up on the bridge, we can take all this off. Thank you. So, okay. do you want me to tell them about keeping it tight? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Please, just a um, just a practical note because the captain's going to uh, take you through the ship. Uh, obviously, take direction because it is a working ship, and uh, there are areas that, um, you know, from an industrial point of view, uh, it's for your own safety to all keep together and listen to the instructions. We're going to have to keep it fairly tight because we have a uh, tight schedule, and we need to be out back out on um, on the shore by 11. So we'll try and, you know, obviously we want to answer all your questions, but uh, at some point we may have to um, move the tour along. Okay. With that, I'll turn you over to the captain. Okay, welcome aboard the Cable Ship Responder. My name is Chris Gabrielson. I'm the master on here. Um, this is a Reliance class cable ship. These little brochures I handed out to you has all the information on the vessel. It also has information on the plow, which I'll be showing you. The ROV, which is a remote operated vehicle, which is a little sub basically that's on the bow. And then the last page has the Hawaii Key cable system and shows a cutaway of the cable tanks and everything I'm gonna discuss right now. So let's start with the basics. Cable ship responder, 140 meters long, 20 meters in beam, wide, okay? We are a cable ship, so our cargo is three tanks. We have cable tank one up there, cable tank two, and cable tank three. This area that you're standing on right here is known as the cable highway, okay? Because this is where all the cable evolutions happen, and it's the highway because when we're laying cable, cable comes out of these tanks and goes out the stern, off the stern. So we lay cable, we're a stern laying cable vessel. Everything goes off the stern. 
okay? Um, let's start with the beginning. Each of these cable tanks has, is loaded with cable. The way cable works is it's come on board, the, like the old days, it's loaded through these cable ports on the side. It came up the gangway, right here this door opens up, and the cable would be fed through there into these little transporters, which is right behind this gentleman, or right here is a transporter as well. The cable goes through that, it opens up, there's a belt that pinches down on it, and that pulls the cable from either a freighter, from, if we're at a particular factory, our factory will send it, when it's coming from the factory, but it gets picked up by this transporter, pulled in, comes into the vessel, then we have these different quadrants, like over here that are set up, and then you bend it, and it either goes up in a tank one, tank two, or tank three. There's people down in the tanks spinning cable. They're actually just down there spinning it in a circular motion. There's some pictures over there, and then one has the picture, and loading the cable in flakes down into the tank. So here's the cable. The system's pre-planned with a bunch of repeaters and other things in it that amplifies the signal to send it off, so they're loading the cable. They load the cable down in the tanks. As they're loading the cable, they're going to get to one of the pre-planned repeaters. So at that point, you need to take a bite out of the cable tank. So you have what's called an uprunner coming up out of the tank. Then it goes right over here to the repeaters, which are stacked over there. This particular system has 83 repeaters in it, and they're all stacked in the repeater racks. So the uprunner comes, it goes to the repeater that's in the repeater rack. Then it, the downrunner comes out of it, it goes back down into the tank, and then you continue coiling into the tank. And that's the whole system. Then there's finally the end of the cable, which is just the final bitter end. And that's how, so there's the load of the cable. All the cable gets loaded up in the tanks. Bites come out for the repeaters that are over there in the rack. Now the vessel's system's loaded. Now we gotta go lay it. So when we head off to lay, the way we lay it is it'll come, I'll just use this tank for illustration because we're right here. It'll take the end of the cable, it'll come up out of the tank, it feeds back, so it'll come right up right here. It'll come out, there'll be a roller right here, it'll go along the roller, it'll come out into this trough end, and go up through this LCE, which is a linear cable engine. That is used for installations. If you look back here, we have three things. We have the LCE, which is the straight line linear cable engine, which is used for, it hits the repeater, the repeater then starts moving, goes out, the repeater goes right through this LCE, the tires open up, it goes through that, and goes out over the stern, down into the water. At that point, it's also gonna pull on the down runner now, so then the down runner will start running back into the tank, and then they'll make the call down runner, running free and clear, it's now coming out of the tank, the cable is coming out of the tank again, and we're back to regular laying. That's it, that's how the whole laying works. The only other things that are thrown into it is, I'll show you when I take you back there, is the plowing aspect. So now that would go through, that, that repeater fits through the LCE, goes off the stern shift, goes down into the water. Cable engineers are monitoring all the tension and everything to get it down. We're driving the vessel at certain speeds to handle everything, it goes to the bottom. If we were plowing, and there are areas that we plow, the reason why the plow is used, that can be used all up to 1,500 meters, is to bury the cable. There are certain areas that you want to bury the cable because of fishing tra uh, traffic or any sort of external aggression on the cable that can cause damage in the future. They want to bury it. This plow is capable of burying up to three meters depending on what the bottom is like. So if we're in an area, which there are several on this, that we need to plow it down and under, the only difference is we have this big plow on the stern. It's a 35 ton plow, it gets launched into the water and it can bury up to three meters what you'll do is we have an A-frame back there, it picks up, has the plow ready to go. Basically, all you're doing is grabbing this cable out of there, you're stopping it off, you're picking it up, and you're loading it up into this plow. The reason why it's called a plow is because it has a share on the bottom, just like a plow for the old days in your, your farm that you're pushing along. So you open, the plow opens up, you load it in the front, it feeds through, it feeds down into the share, you close the depressor on it, now it's trapped in there, it gets lifted up, on the back deck with this big A-frame that I'll show you back there, goes off the stern, gets hung over, goes down into the water. Now we're towing it, we have a wire that tows it, it goes down to the bottom, and then basically at that point, now the same thing, everything gets set back, the cable's still going off that shiv, but now it's going through this plow that we're pulling behind there, and then the plow guys control it and bury it and get the burial. So now we're laying, but it's going down to the bottom, into the plow, and then the plow share, whatever it's coming out, it's buried under the water. And then we travel along forward, pulling this plow, never more than a knot, depending on what kind of burial we're getting. So we're going quite slow, but we're burying the cable. Then, when we're finished at that burial point, we'll stop, go back to recover the plow, we'll loosen it, they grade up and out, 
we pick up the plow, bring the plow back up on deck, stop her off the cable, same thing, grab it, take it out of the plow, put it back into this troughing, and then continue laying away just like I went over right here. That's the whole cable installation and cable vessel process right from here, okay? This linear cable engine is capable of 16 tons. These two drums are capable of 30 tons, and the drums are used for the final bite. The final bite is the end. There's a vessel, the Global Sentinel, laying one end, and then we're laying the other, and there'll be two ends. There's what's called the final bite. So we'll have to go pick that up. Now we're not just laying this install. We go pick it up, you bring the two ends on board, they both come up over the drums, come on board, they go up into this splicer shop. Because in here is the three cable tanks, and then there's this splicer joiner shop over here with that clear cover. It goes in there, they splice the ends, they join them, they produce a joint, and then at that point, we're putting out a bite. So that bite has to be paid out over these two cable drums. It goes around them, and then the bite comes out, people are carrying them, there's lowering lines connected to them, they get walked right up that walkway, this back there's a cable door that opens up, and that bite goes right out off the stern and over. And basically, that's it. That's the whole thing from in here. I will show you before we walk to the back to see the plow. This is the smallest cable we have. This is our LW 17 millimeter. This is the cable. The whole, in here for this project, there's six fibers. This is the fiber that carries the data. All this is just protective over it. So this is the 17 mm. We make up to 44 mm, this rock armor double. And then for this project, 32 is the thicker stuff. So it goes from 14 to 32, that's just all protective to protect it when it's buried and from, and just really to protect these fibers. So this is what we're talking about. Stack in yeah, the I'll, I'll take you over here. Yeah. You could just please do not step on this. Just come up here. These are the repeaters, and in the middle is the BU, which is known as a branch unit. So that would branch off. Instead of one leg, will branch off and go somewhere else. So these are the repeaters, and in the middle is a branch unit. I'll get out of the way so you guys can move. Which is the BU? The BU is the one in the middle. The kind of, you really want to see it. You can come here. All it is is a repeater with the one end has two tails coming out versus the same. Yes, yeah, it's prefabricated in the factory. Yeah, they, they calculate everything out and they decide here's where they are and they, that's how it's loaded. So when we're loading, when you load, the repeater's picked up by a crane, moved over, and then brought on board, yeah. craned over and set here. And during the trip, do you ever test if the circuits continue? All the way. Yeah, even when we're laying, they're, can, they're constantly testing right. to make sure that there's everything's good for there. Yeah, there's, in front of this joint shop is the transmission test shop. So on this side, that's what all this stuff is. This is the joiner shop. Forward is the transmission test shop. Otherwise, to try and find the break in the cable would be a nightmare. Oh, it's easy enough, but... There, there are no breaks in the yeah, cable, you know what it, I mean? It, yeah. This is a solid system. Okay, we'll go on the stern. On the back here, just be real careful. I'll show you the points to be careful at. I'll show you the plow, and then you'll see the rear, and there's another one of these repeaters. You'll get a better shot out there. There's a repeater that was delivered to us inside of a box, okay? Right this way. Just be careful of the step, please. So when you're laying the cable, how many men or how many staff do you have involved in that process? I'll tell you, the bridge a lot. So down here, just one of this LCE, there's two to three in here. There's one guy standing by. On the cable highway, there's two other officers. I'd say a total of 10 down here, and then on the bridge, six to eight. So right. eight to 18. And we work 12 hour shifts, so it's a constant. Yeah, it's labor intensive, but there's quite a few. Okay, this is the back deck. Let me wait for everybody to come out. I'm sorry, this is just such a large group. Normally I have smaller groups and I can be a little bit more intimate and answer more questions, but with this large group and the, the press for time. But in it, if anybody has questions, just shoot them out quick or then I'll be happy afterwards to answer anything as well. Is that everybody?
Okay, this is the back deck. Right here, that's the cable door, opens up. That when we're doing any operations, needing the drums, that has to be open. But when we're just regular laying away on this installation, this little hatch right here opens up and it comes out, all this troughing is connected up and this is where the cable goes out, goes right out this troughing and then over the stern ship. So for the regular installation, most of the time this door is kept closed and we're just using this. We're doing PLGR, practical work or anything. So, cable comes out here, goes through this, goes down, goes over the stern shiv. Right there you can see that's the port and starboard shivs. Those shivs are for when we're doing the final splice or using these drums. Like I said, the stern is rounded, so the cable can come off. It still maintains its bending radius and it can creep right along this, the cheek of the stern. Sometimes due to weather you have to crab and bring the head up into the weather and the cable comes off and goes that way so we can continue laying bad weather up to a certain extent. Okay, so there it is. Here is the plow I was talking about. This is the sea plow, sea stallion. Uh, this is 35 tons. That share on the back, which is the red thing you see, that's where it will bury up to three meters. This cabling and this wire right here is the actual tow wire. This gets towed behind us. We're towing it. And it's capable of 80 tons pull. Most of the time we set the render to 65 tons. So it'll be behind us, 65 tons behind us that we're pulling along to bury this cable under the... Yeah, it's, it's a big, big evolution. So this A-frame right here is a 60 ton A-frame. That'll go on and clamp onto that plow, pick it up, bring it to the stern. Right here we'll grab the cable, load it up into the plow. It's, well, the plow gets moved over here, it's done on deck here. Then it gets picked up with the cable going through the plow loaded on the stern, which one of the pictures kind of shows it hanging back there. And then it goes down, then this tow wire fits into this one shiv, then the cable ends up back into here. There's also this umbilical that goes out with that plow that controls it, because they can control, they move the stabilizers. It's a pretty big evolution. It's not just pulling like you know, a plow on the farm. You know, there's a lot of things going on there. And there's a whole specialized crew that sits back in here and controls that, which I'll discuss more when we get up on the bridge. So that's the plow itself. This is the back deck, uh, the shivs. We have a 10 ton crane here, another 10 ton crane there to assist with anything that's needed. And this is the actual tow wire to the plow. Anybody have any questions? Go back here. Does the, does the cable okay, just, just run along here? Or right in through here. Runners? There's no runners, it just? Nope, just sits right in here. It goes right along right here. But believe it or not, on the back, there's rollers for the yeah. dynamometer and that keeps it up. So most of the time it's lifted off this. Yeah, yeah, so it's okay. going over those rollers coming out from there yeah. and stay, it's not really touching on here. Yes. So it goes out this, and it's on those rollers on the dynamometer, then it rolls over on the shiv, yeah. and that's keeping it rounded. So it's not, you know, but sometimes, yes, it is, <clears> but it's still, and then dependent if we need to, we have water drips that'll go in there and keep it uh, yeah. wet. Yeah. So is the plow pulled out? It's not lifted and put in the water? Oh, no, yes. Yeah, this, this right here, this 60 ton A frame flips yeah. into it and then lifts it up, oh, puts it over okay. into the water, wow. and then you lower it down, you lower it to the bottom, the full pull time, the vessel's moving ahead, yeah, and then it's, and then the same okay. thing, we go back, we'll go back onto it, back up onto yep. it, lift it up off the bottom, right back here, bring it on, and then they open up the plow share, so it's just kind of feeding through there, you know, and then when we get it back on here, we take the cable back out, stick it back into this. While we're here, I'll show you this quickly, and then we'll head to the bridge. This is a repeater that got boxed up and sent back to us. So this is what sometimes the repeaters will look like, a spare repeater in the box. When you're laying it, like is there ever an issue where and when you've got your boat moving forward, can you actually damage it if something damage the plow? Damage the cable and if the ship keeps moving and it's well, that, stuck. Can it happen? Yes. Yeah. Has it happened sometimes? Yes. There are always instances of different And then you'd have cables. to go and find the cable and re-splice it. Then we go back, bring it, recover it, splice right. in. That's why we carry full set of splicers on board for it. Yes. Right. So okay. we, we cover all the contingencies. If yeah. anything happens, we can handle everything basically on board. But obviously we plan to not have that happen. Of course. <laughs> Any other questions for back here on the back deck? Okay, the bridge gives us our best view of everything and there's where it'll kind of tie it all together and I'll discuss the different operations from up there. So I'd say, let's head up to the bridge. Same thing, just be real careful these yellow marked areas here when you're walking.
Okay, actually, you know what to make life easier? We can drop off your hard hats on the way up now. You guys collect, or not for everybody, just, just, you guys just collect the hard hats from everybody? Yep, thank you. And then follow me. Unfortunately, we don't have an elevator, so the rest is uh, Here we are. Where are the photon torpedoes? No, but yeah, it's funny. That's when I first got on one of these, and I thought the same thing. The uh, Starship Enterprise. Yeah. 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 Right. Starship Enterprise. Yeah. Where's the chair? Is it? That's it. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. The, the master's chair. I feel a little bit cheated. There. You need a bigger chair. That's right. down on the bridge is broken down into basically three sections. Forward up here is for like every ship, even though we're a little more technologically advanced than most ships. But up here is the regular shipboard operation, like a regular ship, which I'll go over in a moment. Slide back here where these gentlemen are, that's the cable control, that's CCR. It used to be down on the highway, but we moved it up here so we can communicate and see people better. They run all the cable evolutions, tensions, and everything right from there. Then back aft is the DP console. That's DP for dynamic position, because this vessel is a dynamic position vessel, only if, when we go into it. So what, what dynamic positioning means is all these controllers, which I'm going to discuss in a moment, are run by a computer back there, all these model, models and everything, and it keeps you tight to within basically a foot position. You, you stay there, depending on the seas. Well, that doesn't matter because it calculates all that, and it runs the thrusters. Instead of me manually trying to do it all, the computer does it all. And then from back there, you're, being, you're speaking with the cable control people, and they're telling us what kind of speeds, what course to go on, and what kind of movement. So there's the basic overview. Now I'll get into this. Up here, this particular vessel, we have two 360 asthma thing stern thrusters. These are 4,000 horsepower, and they spin through a 360. This has no rudder. This, there's no rudder on this vessel. The rudder is me moving these however I want to move the vessel. So two 4,000 horsepowers up on the bow, two 2,000 horsepower uh, thrusters. This particular one is a tunnel thruster, which just goes straight across. And this particular one, which kind of makes, makes us unique and great for the cable systems, 
laying and installations is it's a swing down thruster. So I have some pictures here that I'll pass around afterwards. It's the same, once it swings down, it's the same as these 360 asthma thing thrusters. And that's used up forward when we're in DP, it'll help hold station and hold your head if it's different from the wind and whatever it is, you know, you'll stay like that and be able to move because of that 360 asthma thing thruster up on the back. So quickly for leaving here, I would be normal up here, it's time to go, so I would use these two, I would use this one to push me off, so I'd just spin this, push it like this, I would use this to move the bow off, I know my heading's 241, I'll hold 241, I'll push away slowly, I'd spin this one to reverse, back it out, you know, so up here I'm controlling everything manually by doing this, we'll back out, I'll come to that point, I'll spin, get my heading, get going, once we're going in the proper heading, we'll move to a quasi-regular ship, I'll then move these forward, Give them forward thrust between the two of these. I'll work the head, get me to about two knots, three knots. At that point, become a regular vessel, which is sliding back here. I'll keep this kind of quick, but back here, to go over the old days, everybody thinks of the steering wheel, the ship, the ship's wheel, the old wooden helm, you know? I, I have a tattoo of it on me, you know what I mean? It's just the thing. This is what we have nowadays. This little knob right here, this is it. So instead of them seeing me or somebody maneuvering these, the pilots come on board and they say 10 starboard, port starboard. And by the way, a pilot comes on board. They're the ones that help us navigate out of ports, into and out of ports. You must take them, they're compulsory. I've never been to this port before, so they come on board to tell me the local currents and help me get out. So he'll say 10 starboard, 20 port. So he doesn't want to see me doing this. He looks at these indicators right here and we have the guy back here and this was put on just for this and he'll just move this little lever and that's the old days of the ship's helm. So it's not, this. it's not the size that counts, it's what you do with it. Exactly, how it reacts, how it, yeah. how it operates. <laughs> okay. It applies to a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in this case, definitely. Okay, so that's the regular going. Now we're underway, here we go. Now we're gonna get on site for where the project's gonna be. Now we slide back aft to the dynamic position. But before I do that, so we don't have to come back up here, if you look forward here, that's the ROV. That's the remote operated vehicle. That can go down, uh, these are on your brochure, the third page on there. This can go down 2,500 meters. And what that does is that goes down to inspect the cable, inspect the burial, certain areas, you know, afterwards, like for the plow ups and plow downs, we'll go there, inspect it, do a little jetting, jet it under. This can bury up to 1.5 meters by jetting. It runs these water jets and it shoots and it'll bury the cable and help bury it. So which is the actual vessel then? We're seeing something with a big round The thing yellow. Here. The yellow. Oh, the, oh, yeah. That's it. The other thing gets picked it up. You know, that's the little A-frame on it. It lifts it up. It's a mini A-frame like the A-frame on the back. Lifts it up, brings it over to the port side and then drops it. So it's the not, yellow is the actual vessel. It's not manned. It's it's not manned. No, it's remote ROV, remote operated vessel, and that's run by a crew of guys sitting in the container up there. There's all cameras that they have. We have cameras, and they run everything. It has two manipulator arms, so the arms can actually grab and do things when they're down there. They can also cut the cable, and they have a gripper that they can put on and grip as well if we need to recover using that. It's, so they can run the arms. It has tracks. So it goes onto the bottom and it will run on the tracks and track the cable and go over it. It also has the ability to fly and just use their little propellers and stay up off the bottom if it's too rocky and fly around. The other thing up you've seen up there is a two-ton crane. That's really just used to support the ROV and to bring ship stores aboard. The maintenance vessel, could, could this be a maintenance vessel? Yes, it could. And several, we have one on, that is in, you know, yes, they have several, yes. We can do maintenance and repair and full installation. Okay, we'll slide back this way and I'll discuss the DP and the cable. I see you have dot matrix printers. Yeah, for that, that's the GMDSS system and the old school, that requires them actually. But we have state-of-the-art other things. We have chart printers, we have, but for that actual unit, yeah, we have old school dot yeah. matrix. Are they the manuals on how to run this thing? We have it all digitally too, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, no, that's not the goal. Believe it or not, that's just all for the charting and the uh, navigation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm only checking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, one of the things I forgot to say up there is and we have radars. There's also an ECTUS, electronic chart display and information. We also use paper charts. Then, while we're back at this point, I may as well knock this part. This is the CCR part. This is where they can control the LCE, they can control the drums down there, they're looking at the tensions, they're monitoring everything, and basically when I'm back here, or another DPO that's 
back here when we're driving, they'll tell us what speeds to go, what to do, what courses to do, as per all their computer information. Yeah, the guys in the chair. Yeah, the guys, yeah. the guys in the chair. And they even have a curtain. So we sometimes refer to them as the guys behind the curtain, you know, but normally not. But, you know, normally we keep it open, open communication. Yeah. Okay? These guys also have a Mackay lay system over there that shows, you know, all the, the laying stuff. This is them. This is the computer central, cable central right here. What's the top speed that you can lay cable at? We can lay six knots if we're laying surface lay, that little 17 millimeter stuff. Yep. Six knots would be the top. But at when we're plowing, it depends on the burial. So it could be one knot tops, but it depends. We could be doing point two. You know, we can do. Yeah. And sometimes that's kind of hard to fathom too. Point two. You know, anybody that has their own vessels, they go out. You know, one knot is like you know. But we're right in there. Point one, point two, Precise. point three. You know, Precise. we can even make it point two five. You know, we have the capabilities back here. Mm -hmm. So. That's the CCR. Here's our VSAT. This is for our satellite communication and our internet access. We have two of these units. Yes. Now, back here is DP. So this is interesting. This, this to me, this is where I believe all vessels in the future are going to go, the dynamic positioning, because it really is the future. And we've had it since 2001. Uh, we're pretty technologically advanced with that. So back here, we will pull into site. We've now hit whatever cable spot we're going to, it's time now. Okay, let's get into DP. All it takes to go from me up there maneuvering and doing, or the helmsman going, is this one little switch right here. You come to the switch, you go from what's called manual to DP, you switch that over. As Soon as that's in DP, I come over to these two, we have redundant systems, so there's two of them. They're both redundant, just in case one goes down, we have double redundancy. So we always drive from this one, just because that's where the chair's mounted. Come over here, put all the thrusters in, Put in the GPSs now. So we have three digital GPSs that we have special corrections sent out for us, and that keeps us tight, real right where we are. You bring it in, but now I'm coming from that. I'm coming in. I need to now scrape the speed off. If I got some headway on or some thwart ship motion, it all shows right here. I'll then work it from this stick, this joystick. So this joystick, instead of sitting and playing with all this, if I want to go forward, I go forward. If I want to go a little bit to port, I move it a little bit to port. If I want to go on a 45, I move it on a 45. If at the same time I want to change my head, I spin this. You can do everything right here off this joystick. But all I'm doing is bringing it in to settle it in so my speeds are down low. Once I'm in that position, I press this one button that says auto position. That's it. Now the computer has it all. I'm sitting here, the computer's calculating it all. It's now in DP, auto position. I'm watching my thrusters, my power generation. At that point, I can turn this head, and this is the big thing with DP that's very difficult for people that just regular sail or you know motor yachts or even on regular ships, merchant vessels. You can change this head to anything. On the computer, I just grab this, move it, I can change that, and then I can move the vessel any way. I can move it laterally, I can move it back on a 45, anything. As long as the currents and the, the wind out there works for me, I can do anything. You control here the speed, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. So when it's time to lay cable, we'll be laying in a perfect world, say it's 250 and there's no wind and currents out there, I'd face 250 and start moving down the track, whatever they tell me. So they'll say, you know, 0 0.5, you know, so we'll be moving to 0.5. I'll say, Roger, 0 0.5, we'll go with 0.5. If a wind picks up and it's coming up out of the um, northwest, I will then crab the vessel, bring it up into that wind, have its face in there, but then I'll still be moving down track at the 250 and controlling it all from right here. If, and we can handle up to say 30, 35 knots, depending where it's from. If it gets over that, then what we'll have to do is face up into it, stop the laying of the cable and just lay and ride it out facing up into the wind, still in DP, because this DP is the best. I've been in this vessel 55 knots steady on the bow, laying on it in DP with big swell, and it's just real nice. You know, as soon as you take it to the beam or anything else, then it's a different story. But that's it. That's the whole DP thing. Here's Windfrog, which comes from them that I'm following. You're looking at it on here. It's all run by the computer. It's got wind sensors out there. It's got, we have sensors about the vessel, so it picks up the movements, the rolls. It calculates all that, and it puts it up as this external current, and it does it all from right here. When we're finished and we're ready to transit back on, I go back over there, switch that button, come back out of this move up forward, and I'm back to a regular vessel underway. People had asked, crew. The crewing, when we're underway, there's a mate on watch up there, two ABs, and that's it for the underway part. Once we're doing cable, it's a mate up there, two ABs, one cable engineer, one EIC2, one DPO back here, then down on the highway, there's a highway mate, there's two people running the LCE, there's uh, eight 
ABs down there to assist with cable, and then transmission test, there's two. One transmission guy, there's two uh, splicer joiners, so there's constantly tons of people up, and it's a 24-hour evolution, it's 12-hour shifts each. So there's constantly people working, and cable goes 24 hours unless we're on a weather down. Last thing then from up here, looking back, there's the back deck where we were, but in between here there's the tow hut, that's where all the tow wires kept, uh, and that's the plow control van. So we have separate people on board, one team of eight people that come on and they run either the plow or the ROV, depending, you never run them both at the same time. And they're either in charge of running the plow, or then when we're done plowing, we switch, they'll slide up and run the ROV. And all of our communications are done over this cable PA, so everybody on board hears everything that's happening. We all carry, I don't have it with me now for the tour, but we all carry handheld radios too. But this is everything, because cable PA, everybody on board hears, and they're all aware of what's happening at cable time. Are these big boys, are they? Yes, these are, yes, these are, the, no, yeah, the, the yellow is, these others are Yokohama fenders. We use them when other vessels, or if we come up on a pier and it's sketchy, yeah. we'll put those out. But yes, the big boys are so those. So if you drop, drop one in the cable, so you can find it again. Yes, the, yes, and down on the deck, if you, you can't really see from here, but down on the F deck, we have two 10-ton buoy dabbies on the sides for, and these are just spare, that's a spare route. What do you do if you get a southern whale, a southern spotted blue whale? We have the southern right whale up. If you see a southern right whale, we've got to report it, we've got to stop cable operations. Then if we see it, I believe it's an hour before sunset, we have to stop all cable operations until sunrise to make sure that they're not by the and if you're in a force 12 storm and it's coming in on, on the side, on, on, on the board We wouldn't be. That was a great question. In case, if the seas get are planned on being really bad, then we buoy off or we stream and we leave. If it's going to be a typhoon or a hurricane, depending on where we're working, we don't stand by for that. We'll stand by for 45 knots, you know, certain things that you can't do cable and we'll stand by for. But if there is typhoons coming, you then stream off or buoy and the vessel gets out of there and then we come back after when it's safe. So how, many, how far away do you go just from the radar? It, you go at, it depends. We have to, I get weather reports and I'm tracking the where, where we feel it's safe. We'll head off to that. So, so you, you put a buoy on the, um, on the cable? Right? If there's time. If not, you just stream it, which means you lay it in the water with, a, with a, a weight on the end, you know, an anchor, and then it just gets dropped off and either release it acoustically or you have a slip rope and then you just try, and it goes down and then you come back later and drag for it, catch it, bring it back up. Normally, that's when it weather's picking up. That's probably what you'll so do most. If there's a fourth twelve and you have a big storm on, on, the, on the starboard side, mm -hmm. then, then 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 you can't run the ship. Right. The storm, so that's why you have to bend it. Yep. Oh, well, the fourth twelve. Yeah, that's what it would mean. Bend it. Abandon. Yeah. 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 You would have to. You know, terminology is called like yeah. yeah we'll just. Slip it, we'll stream it, we'll buoy it, and then we will head off for weather downtime and so you've storm obviously had to do that a few times. Just oh yeah, because of yeah, it's mother nature. It's mother nature. You can't control. You know, typhoons happen. You know, Have you ever hit a whale? No, never. Had. Nope, never had. All of our vessels never had any instances with uh, any sort of. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Anybody have any questions? While I'm here, I guess we have a little time, so I'll gladly answer anything. Oh, you're quite welcome. No, I'm glad you enjoyed the time on the responder. I do. I mean, I, I, I love what I do. I cable. I've been sailing 28 years and uh, love it. I found my way over to the cable system. I used to work for other you know things, and then I got over to the cable, and ever since I've absolutely loved it. T subcom is fantastic. Cable ships are great. This is an interesting. There's not that many of these vessels out there, you know, and this whole DP. I came from an old vessel that had nothing. We had a little bow thrust, a thousand foot long, you know, and it was totally different. There, I would anchor, you know, I'd anchor at a knot and a half. Here, I'm controlling things at point one, point two. It's a whole nother world, you know. Do you dock it using DP? No, you, no, I do it hand. Like, I'm up there, and I, like I said, I'll make one a tug, and I, no, I do it all by this. Just because, even though you can DP, I'm not comfortable. I'm more comfortable with my hands on it. Manual. Just like, we have CCTVs all over everything on here that I'm, we're monitoring all the time. Even that, I like to have my hands right on there, then I like to actually go out on the bridge wing and then I'll have somebody else and I'll control them what to do with their hands. I trust my eyes a lot more than I trust the camera. Yeah. Okay? And what, and what sort of bandwidth are you getting on the, on the ship? How Good many question. megabits? That's the ET, what, you mean for our internet stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, not the fastest, but it's, it's sufficient. Yeah. Let's put it that way.
when you lay a cable and it's in, say, 4,000 metres, yep. you've got to come back three years later and repair it. Yep. How do you allow slackness as you're laying the cable so you can get the cable back to the surface? There's always a bait. There's going to be a bait in there. The, well, but no, you, no, actually, if there's a problem, no. So what you do is you come and you run a cutting drag, you cut it. So cut it and bring it yeah, up. Yeah, you have yeah. to cut it and then you pick okay. up, then you come back water depth yep. again, bring it up yep. that way, and then you yep. splice in extra cable yep. and they all calculate that stuff. That's and that's, you know, so that's yeah. Yeah. Did you do the repair of Madang for us a few months ago? No. Okay. This is my first time in this part of the world. Is it? I'm from New York, USA. Yeah, it's my first time to Australia yeah. in this area. And I absolutely. Yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to get ashore. I'm too no. busy, but coming in was beautiful. Passing yes. by the Opera House, going under the house. Yeah, that was lovely. We got, we got to see some great photos. Actually. That's great. Yeah, I heard there was some drone footage, too. I would yeah. love yeah. to try to get a hold of some of that. Yeah, yeah. it was lovely. I'll make sure you do. The, with the other, sorry, your sorry. other uh, boat, the Sentinel, is, it's going to be about a month earlier coming south from Hawaii. Honestly, yeah. I'm not really sh too sure on what's happening. So then they just, when they run out of there... They'll cable, stream it. Yep. What they're going to do is stream it. They'll lay it on the bottom, or just yes. the clump, and then when we get to that point, we'll come up, we'll have to buoy off. It's a big complicated, but then basically we just pick that end up to our yep. end. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Time it? Perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay, unfortunately, I would love to, I'd, I'd be glad to speak to you guys forever up here and, you know, tell you about the good ship responder, but we're out of time, okay? Do it, right? So, if everybody will follow me, we'll head down back to the gangway. And thank you very much for coming over. Thank you very much. Oh, you're quite thank welcome. you. <laughs> I guess on the desert up here. I don't know. It's steep. What the lateral? The ladders, yeah. I mean yeah, that's enough. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got somebody on the end who's kind of handling the end. Hurry, hurry people up here. <laughs> Move them along. So is the captain's quarters uh, nicer than all the rest? Or is it uh, no, the same? it's the same as the chiefs and the same as the chief mate and the first officer. They're all equal. Yeah. The old days of the beautiful quarters are over. Yeah, you know, everything's yeah, about yeah. size and... Yeah. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, I have a little office and a, and a stateroom. I'm not complaining. Sure, sure. Not the big, you know, the old days you went on vessels, there were these beautiful yeah. captain's quarters. Well, I mean, this is a, it's a working ship, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's good. Everybody's coming, Doug. Yeah, you're not going to live up the side. Just stand by. I'm not in a hurry. Well, thank you very okay. much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed Cheers. it. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks Bye -bye. for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.